We're joined in the media center by the current number one qualifier in Funny Car, John Force, after two sessions, 4.015 seconds at 318.62 miles an hour. John, you've already wrapped up the championship, uh, 16th championship. What What's driving you guys today to you know, still perform and get in that number one qualifying position so far? Well, we're here at Auto Club Raceway. It's one of our sponsors. And uh, the championship, we're going to celebrate, but it's behind us right now. We're focusing on winning and uh, keeping all the guys' attitudes right. Hopefully, maybe, yeah, long not a long shot, but if everything goes right for Courtney with the Traxxas car, it didn't go right right there. That scared me. That's a pretty big explosion. That's right behind her. <clears throat> Robert went down there, so we're trying to gobble up points, keep away from the competition, we're trying to finish one, two, and three. Don't know if we'll get there, but that's our, our drive. With Courtney's car? Uh, no, they said it was just a. Just the motor uh, had one of them fits, like I have sometimes, and it just blew up. She was okay. She was out that roof hatch. She knows the drill. And uh, yelling on the radio to the guys to talk to me. So, I'm good. My dragster even ran good, 78. So, Dean Antonelli and uh, John Mellon doing a good job, Brittany. Coming around and said, stay motivated since you have the championship already clinched. Well, every conversation, every interview is about winning that, but I've been out here a long time. Before you were born, Bobby, I knew how to turn the switch off. <laughs> and I just, you know, like trying to win. I turn it off, I focus on what I got to do today, just like when I raced Courtney in the final at Vegas. It wasn't my kid over there, I turned it off so I, so I could keep my energy right where I was at. And got it done. Okay, you know you have the championship. You still want this victory equally as hard. I, uh, it's really funny. Our guys work as a team. Uh, Mike Neff, he's on the radio to Jimmy Proc. Uh, we were really watching what Courtney can do. We don't watch Orsham ran an O2, but we don't watch that because our cars are different. And we were just waiting for Courtney to show us the way. You know, if you notice racing last week, uh, for us to try to get the championship, they always tried to line up to go ahead of us. You know what I mean? So we could read off of them, Robert and her. And it's a real good team deal. And all the guys, they really gel. But my, my deal with Jimmy is when I watch him smile. You know what I mean? Uh, he, that confidence. Uh, wasn't smiling the first half of the year. And uh, that new chassis made him smile. But just watching him out there like today, the when she blew up, I thought maybe it. it Maybe it struck the tire and blew the bar off it. And Jimmy, Jimmy turned around and said, "No, nah, just a, a you know malfunction." I said, well, "Jimmy, you think it'll go down there?" And that big old smile broke out on his face, and he's like, "Yeah," but he's got confidence now, and and we've locked up the title that we came for. But that confidence sometimes it'll beat you up. I had it struggling the drive earlier in the year. Oh, it was terrible. The new car I didn't fit in. I, I said all this before, so. We're having fun right now, and uh, uh, the fans are happy, and uh, we're chasing corporate America. I'm gonna have to get on some shoes to catch them. <laughs> and, and, but uh, um, having a good time winning this 16, and being with my kids. Grandchildren are all here in the cars. John, and, uh, how do you go awesome. about teaching your uh, teammates, your daughters, and, and Robert Hyde, how to be a clutch player in the game here? You're absolutely one of the best clutch players when when the odds are stacked against you. Somehow well, you pull out a horseshoe and go to it. Yeah, but it ain't, it ain't just, I wish I'd like to say I had magic, but I don't. Uh, it's it's being with the right bunch of guys, having the sponsors, like Auto Club, Ford, and Cast for the brand source, Traxxas, to buy the right people. And uh, and then, they, then you rally those people together and then you do your job as a driver, and, and sometimes you get the magic. Hagen had it all year. We couldn't compete with him all year. And um, all of a sudden, I couldn't hardly make the countdown. And then all of a sudden, it just turned around. Something happens, new car, attitude, whatever. It ain't me. I do, I do what I always do. But, but uh, morale is important. And when you're down and struggling, it's hard to get up. So. <clears throat> What was the how do you teach your teammates how to be a clutch you, player like yeah, you? Put in 40 years, like, how long have I really been out here? Even 30? 35. 35. As long put as in, I've been alive. 
but he put out 35 years mm -hmm. and you'll learn because clutch plays are based on the crew chief having the right attitude mindset not going to panic mode the, the team to make the right calls and, and, and three for the driver under that pressure to make the right decision and the only way you learn that unless you're magic and I've never really met anybody with that much magic except Dale Earner okay and and he just could do things no matter how bad the situation was take a bad car and win with it one thing to have a good car and be struggling and then to win you know what I mean but to have a bad car and win that's something and out here it's tough to have a bad car and win but it's under that pressure to not cave in and I only learned it because my daughters asked me dad I get up there I get that pressure and it comes on I said I can't teach you that I, I can't teach you that only from from getting those black eyes and losing, be a bridesmaid night time, and people laughing at you, that one day you wake up and you say, well, this ain't working, so I'm gonna go have fun. And all of a sudden you find the magic. Because you drive all these runs, and you do the same, and you evolve, and you do good, and you work your way up to winning a, a, a championship, and then you fail, and then one day, because oh, pressure changed you. And after a while, you get slugged enough times, you ain't afraid no more. So you go up there and all of a sudden where there should be pressure, like the Montreal story, you don't care no more. Good light, good pedal job, and you win. All because you got over it. And you did what you were always trained to do. And I ain't saying there aren't naturals out there, <clears throat> but I've always found, you know, you gotta, you gotta learn it. You gotta learn it by mistakes.